Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Catholic Church of St. Mark. Before we begin, please take a moment to silence your cell phones and other electronic devices. Please rise as we begin. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Beloved, today we celebrate the body and blood of Christ as a feast. You know, once we are done with the Easter season, and we start the green season, as I start with the green season, we kind of celebrate the feast of God. So we had uh, the feast of Holy Trinity last time, uh, which was pretty much about us, and today is also the body and blood of Christ. And what is the essence of the body and blood of Christ again for us? So by the food Jesus gives us, he makes us a family. We are a family, we eat together of the same food. Is there anybody having special diet on this food? No. So you see, it's our perfect identity that Jesus gives us. And so this feast celebrates that and then celebrate also ourselves as we thank God for being so good and so loving to us. As we come before our Lord and Father, beloved, let us call to mind our sins. I confess May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us all our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. We live and reign with God, the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, but entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that the flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciousness from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, where do we, you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? 
he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread and said a blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, the Gospel of the Lord. So I have something little to, to share with you here on this wonderful feast. Um, so I have a chalice on the altar, not the, the big one, uh, but, it's the, but it's just for demonstration. Don't you see that the readings of today is a little scary? Blood, blood, blood. No sacrifice is a little scary, eh? Yeah, and that is who we are. That's our identity. So. Not to take you far, but you could understand why God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son for him. God knew he would not allow him to do that, but God had that in mind, to sacrifice himself for us. So, Kalish, you, you, are, you are something. Hmm? You eat the body and blood of Christ. That's why people can't understand us fully. And please don't let them get over you. It is true. You are eating indeed the body and blood of Christ. Don't let the world of today eat so much into us to kind of take away, should I say, the sacredness of the communion from you. It is the body of Christ. Because so, there was some kind of surveys that we were saying, Carlos do not even believe in the, that's them. Believe, it is real. All right, so but today I have just some demonstration to do. You see, now during mass, I have blessed the wrong word. We don't bless. Although we kind of we tend to use them. That's why I want to do a demonstration. It's a follow-up of our Eucharistic revival we had last year, just to make it much more practical. Now, during this session, it's, it's a prayer of consecration. Eh? Consecrated prayer, of course, are irreversible because they transform. And so, after the prayer of consecration, the bread and wine, you will see it bread and wine, but it's transformed to be the body and blood, and it's irreversible, you see? Uh, so, that is why the church will use the word transubstantiation and all those kind of things. Anyway, now, these are some technical things that is on me, and a little bit perhaps also on you. For me, as the celebrant, main celebrant, if after uh, consecrating and the, there's a body and blood and we have said the Lamb of God ready to eat. First, I must be the first to eat. It's a way of completing the Mass. I'm the main servant. So I can't even give communion to any other person if I have not eaten. So I have to be the number one to eat. 
to kind of confirm even the songs we usually sing some time ago, and, and I like the Ricky Manalo version of it, which is rejoice, the people of God, because we are the body of Christ. So when I receive Jesus, then I become the body of Christ, then I can give him to people. You see? And it follows that same way. So when you also receive, you give Jesus to people by the way you, you live your lives and so on and so forth. So that's number one on me. I have to be the first. So if I don't eat it first, for the church, it says that the mass is not said. So it means that there's something wrong. You have to go back. That's the first one. Then the second part is that I have to also eat for you to see. I can't eat like this. You see? No. I, I am the one performing the sacrifice. You see, the performer up leading the sacrifice must lead with example. By eating, I put a dent on the fact that I believe in what I have done. The very thing we are ordained for. That is why our basic names are priests. Pastors, all of us are not pastors. Pastors are just uh, titles given because of the kind of job we gi they give us in addition. But our basic job is being priest, offer sacrifice. So that's number two. I have to eat for you to see. And you have to see me, the way my mouth up and down, you have to see it. And it's also pretty much like what Jesus said in John chapter 6. When they challenged him a little, how can we eat your body? They said, he responded that, oh, if you have to really eat my body. You see, there was an emphasis there. And if you go to the proper, uh, uh, the proper words he used, because of translation, the English will have the same word, eat. But the emphasis he placed on eat there was a different emphasis altogether. It's like you have to chew me just like the way the animals would do with the, I mean, the, the buffalo or whatever, the, those who are herbivorous who deal with the grass. They you have to chew me. So it's eating. Assimilate me in your body. So that is so much. So there's a whole lot that goes into But let me just read a little bit of what the church requires of us here, just so you know. The priest receives first, not because of a human protocol, but in virtue of the dignity and nature of his ministry. This practice is rooted in the understanding of the mass as a sacrifice, where the priest acts as the mediator between God and the people. By receiving communion first, the priest symbolizes his role in offering the sacrifice on behalf of the people. So there's something there. It is not merely a matter of politeness or hospitality, but rather a theological and liturgical significance. And then also, you also come here, uh, finally the priest must receive communion under both species. You must also see me eat the body and blood together. I can't eat the body and I start distributing. How about the blood? For me, it is mandatory to eat both species at mass for the mass, as I say, to be valid. And let me read what the church has here also for us. But beloved, I tell you, talking about communion, there's always one person you can always refer to. And the name is Thomas. You can continue the rest. St. Thomas what? Aquinas. Yeah, he, a lot of revelation came from him. But of course, the church have to learn a lot from him, but uh, the church will put things together. But we have a lot that he said for the church. Finally, the priest must receive communion under both species. So far as the sacrament itself is concerned, it is most fitting that both the body and blood be received since the perfection of the sacraments rests in both. Because it is the priest's duty to both consecrate and to complete the sacrament. So we have a lot to do here, beloved in Christ. That is why you have to keep praying for your priest and uh, you, you, you will not let us die, I know. Now, a little bit for us. Now, when we also come to receive communion for the priest or for all those who are ministers, we must also receive and eat for him to see 
So you see, or, so most of the time when you receive, you eat immediately or sometimes you step like this and then you eat. If you turn and begin to move, that is wrong. Uh -huh. And you see, a little bit of this creep into in the church in recent times because of the COVID. People were afraid even, so when some people receive communion, they will, which is not allowed anyway, but no, COVID brought so many things. They will even take it to their pew and sanitize it before they eat. So now that we are moving away from COVID by God's grace, we are going back to normal, so we need reminders. The reason for the Eucharist revival and the reason why I am continuing my in this sense, the reason why we are having all ministers meeting, you realize that in this new dispensation, the ushers are going to have much more work to do. That is why we probably also pray that many of you who are attached become ushers to also help the church. So when you receive, you have to eat. The moment you begin to move, then the celebrant, the law requires me to follow you. But you see, it's not possible. It's not practicable. Because at that time, some people will be in the queue receiving. How do I have to stop and follow this person to make sure the person eats? That is where the ushers will come in. And pretty much some of these things, they are not very common anyway, but once in a while with visitors, you may have one or two, probably some may creep in who may not be communicants or one thing or the other. That is why these kind of ministers training beloved in Christ are very, very important for us. Now, also for those who distribute communion uh, with the priests, there's one thing, uh, I think, uh, well, I keep telling people, but I know people don't believe so much of what I say, I understand. Not, not here, not uh, what I say outside, but because I say that uh, certain things, I've not seen it here, but people don't believe me. <laughs> Uh, I, I've not seen this one also here, like the minister, there are some of the ministers who sometimes may not receive communion, but they may get communion and go and distribute. So I think per what I've explained, you see that that's not allowed. I've not seen that here at all. Will you believe me? You may not believe me. He said, Father, it's too nice on us. How can I say what I have not seen? I can only say what I've seen anyway. But that's good. So we don't want uh, ministers to, to be in that way. So when you think that you cannot, you are not, not in a good state or the request to receive communion, and if you are on schedule to distribute communion, it means I have to let somebody take your place. Don't come and stand here and then receive and go and distribute. That is wrong. You see, so these are some of the things. And then also, maybe lastly, I, I don't intend to take a lot there. Lastly, about our first communicant. You see that for them, those who are about to receive communion for the first time, for them, by law, they must only eat from the communion that is blessed on that particular mass. So it means that during that mass, we, we will not even look at the tabernacle. Because if we give them communion from the tabernacle, we made them partakers of the previous mass. So there are a lot that goes on. Beloved in Christ, the church has a lot to do. But today, maybe enough for today, I just want uh, you all or us all to know how God has become so close to us. We talk about God so freely. And we talk about God as if he's even sitting with us. That is how uh, it is. And as, as I tell you about this, um, Sometimes I even becomes, I mean, you think about some of these things. Say, so what did the church see? And indeed, they did see so many things. God has come to stay with us. He is our food. Believe it or not, he is our food. And as priests, almost every day, we keep praying about this. Because sometimes, I mean, it, it becomes a routine. Is it really God? He is. You see, that is what I want to conclude with. Beloved in Christ, we pray that the good Lord strengthens us in our faith today. May we thank God more in our lives as we come and receive him, the body and blood of Christ. He is indeed with us as our nourishment, our strength, and our journey to him. The, uh, he, said, he said something more about, I will not eat this with you until where? In the kingdom. So it means that our eating here is not just we, we eat here 
in preparing to the eating he's waiting for us so that is why you can keep yourself away from such a holy food you only need to keep ourselves pure prepared enough and keep eating jesus christ may the lord bless us all amen Shall you please rise, beloved? Let us profess our faith in God. I believe in one God. minutes for our service. Let us come before our Lord and Father and present our petitions. For Pope Francis, along with our bishops and pastors, that they will lead the Church of God throughout the world to always cherish the precious gift of the Eucharist and work to bring this gift to all who hunger for justice, we pray. For those who lead nations, that they will strive to bring food to the hungry and water to the thirsty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who search for meaning and direction in their lives, that they will find this community a place where their needs will be met, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bring Holy Communion to the sick in the hospitals and homebound, that they will be blessed on this festival day and be strengthened in their own love of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, we pray. For the sick of our parish, along with the family and friends, that they will be that they will know strength in their time of need, we pray. Lord, we pray. For those who have died, that they will be nourished forever at the banquet feast of heaven, especially those we remember this weekend. Razor Garcia, we pray. For all the prayers in our prayerish book of intercessions and those in our hearts, that they will rise like incense to our God, we pray. Lord, Let's ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. God, your son's body and blood renew your covenant with us. Provide what we ask and sustain us through our life's work. We ask this through Christ our Lord. i 
Pray, beloved, in Christ, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Lord, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of His name. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. He offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit of whenever they do fall, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy your Church spread to all the world and bring prayer to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Risa, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray that to the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you guys.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Please be seated. So we have the exposition today and for a brief time you just said some prayers before Jesus acknowledging our appreciation and then also our commitment to the body and blood of Christ and then I'll, I'm about to say a prayer shortly and I will now move in the middle round with the sacrament Yes, you keep praying silently before him. And then after, once I come back here, I will bless you with the sacrament before we go to the announcements. So that will be pretty much how we mark the Corpus Christi celebration at this Mass. Let us pray. Refresh, O oh Lord, by this saving food and drink. We pray that we may always be bathed in the blood of our Savior, so that it may become for us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life through Christ our Lord. So we invite you to silent prayer. You could sit, or if you want. We can also need whichever way you want, just for now, please.
May the Lord bless us. I think we have the announcements. Who's taking the? <laughs> Take few. We'll see. Yo, so, Mr. President, will read the announcement to us. Thank you. With great success, that we that. Uh, the husband of our first and only prior uh, pastoral associate, Kathy Muldoon, her husband, Pat, um, passed away this previous week. The funeral will be at St. Paul's 522 High Street in Portsmouth, June the 7th uh, at 11 a.m. Our former pastor, Father Dan Clem, will be the presider. Vacation Bible School is searching for a station leader or station leader volunteers and adults and teens to set sail from July 22 to July 26. Registration is open for children in grades kindergarten through five as scuba participants. That is the theme of the VBS this year. Father's Day is approaching, looking for a chance to bowl your dad over in the commons. Men of the parish, our men's retreat is scheduled for June the 7th, starting at 5 p.m. through June the 8th. Uh, I would encourage as many men as possible to please come. There uh, is a sign-up sheet in the Commons, and there is also a little yellow card that has more information about the men's retreat. Again, men of the parish, please uh, avail yourself to this opportunity. We would love to have you. We ask that you would please pray for our first communicants who will receive their first communion today, this afternoon at the 1 p.m. liturgy. And please, as always, check the bulletin for other happenings, events, and details. Thank you. So just for the men's retreat, you no, know, coming Friday is actually the feast of the most sacred heart of Jesus. We are already in, in green season, but why are we not wearing the green? Because we start the season with the feast of God, which is actually about us. So yes, last week was the most holy trinity. This Sunday is the Corpus Christi, all of God, but it's still about us, actually. The last one to end before we actually start the proper green is the feast of the most sacred heart, which is on Friday. The idea is to emphasize 
on Friday, the Good Friday, the cross. You see, that is why the church kept that feast on Friday. It would have been another Sunday. So that particular mass is what we start together with the men's retreat. So all parishioners are invited to come for that mass on Friday at 6. And then afterwards, we are going to have our potlucks, and the men will continue with their retreat at their retreat center there about. They will join us from us here, and afterwards, they will move to their retreat center to continue to the next day. But we are coming for the mass at 6, and then we have potluck. So please endeavor to attend. Thank you. Shall you please rise? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 